Yep, I'm like, um, so, God's been on an interesting track, um, in, in the last few days this week. I, I was, first of all, I, this morning, if you saw my live, I was talking about the book, um, the books I've been reading and relating it to what God has been teaching me and showing me. And, and this morning in church, um, first of all, I, I should say for the past few weeks, the Lord has been really teaching about what, um, past, um, past, uh, sins of the fathers and past things and what to leave and what to take away. And, and, uh, Stephen Furtick has been doing messages. His first, I think the Lord has been having him on an intent, uh, on, uh, what I say, God tensional series, which is uh, unintentional for him, but very intentional for God. So the first message of this series is called uh, "Be careful what you copy," and the second message of this series is "Copy that." And today's message, I'm not sure what the sermon title is. But he was talking about, um, he was talking about Luke 6, where the, um, where the Pharisees were on Jesus' back for doing something on the Sabbath. And, um, he was talking about the traditions traditions versus the truth and sometimes the traditions we take away are not the truth so we have to let it go and leave something behind and yesterday um when i i was watching an author interview um on youtube with Taylor Jenkins Reed and Robin Lee talking about a book I briefly talked about this morning uh, called Malibu Rising. If you want to go back and look at my video from this morning, feel free. Um, anyway, in Malibu Rising, uh, among all the craziness, there is a quote that I absolutely loved. I loved it when I heard it, and I it stuck with me, and I was like, because at first when I was reading this, I thought, Lord, this book is lawless, full of people doing drugs and whatever. What do you want me to see here? And um, in this interview, the person read the exact quote, and uh, um, Taylor told the story behind it. Now, I recorded it from YouTube, and I'm going to play it for you now. Now, the, uh, the YouTube handle that it's on is from Warwick Books, and it's a conversation between... Um, uh, the author of Malibu Rising, Taylor Jenkins Reid, and Robin Lee. So, and it, in the clip I found, it talks a bit, it reads the quote, and then she explains how it came about, and... I'm going to play that before I, before I begin, begin my actual 
sermon. Okay, so give me a second to get it out. I'll be with you guys in a second. And I will put the whole interview, if you're interested in hearing this interview, um, on, on YouTube, on my channel. Along with the books I talked about this morning in my other video. Here is the clip from the conversation with Taylor Jenkins Reed and Robin Lee. If you're wondering what I'm singing while I'm trying to get this clip set up here, I'm singing my Get Loud from Elevation Worship, Shameless Plug. It just, the single just came out everywhere this week. If you are, uh, the song is not for everyone, but if you are a rocker like I am and you like that hard, those hard guitars and hard, hard Hard, hard rock music, uh, you love this song. I absolutely love it. So, it's called Mike It Loud by Elevation Worship. The video's up, the song's out everywhere. Shameless plug. So, here is the clip from Taylor Jenkins Reed and, and Robin Lee. There's a part in the book, and it's not getting in the way, but it's one passion that just really stood out to me. And talking about family and siblings, and it made me think that also relates to feel like mothers and their children, and, and mm -hmm. um, all that baggage or not or whatever. And I just wanted to read it um, because I thought it was extraordinary. As a, reading it as a mother, uh, I have two kids and a daughter. Um, and also reading it as a daughter and, and you know, all <laughs> the way. Um, so, Nina suddenly had a picture in her head. It was as if June had given her a box, as if every parent gives her children a box full of the things they carry. June had given her children this box packed in the room of her own experiences, her own treasures and husbands, her own guilt and pleasures, triumphs and losses, values and biases, duties and sorrows. And Nina had been carrying around this box her whole life, feeling the full weight of it. But it was not Nina's son just then, her job to carry the full box. 
Her job was to sort through the box, decide what to keep and to put the rest down. She had to choose what of the things she inherited from the people who came before her she wanted to bring forward, and what of the past she wanted to leave behind. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I may have stopped and cried a little bit. <laughs> and it made me think about all the things, the weight that I carried from my own parents and their expectation of me, and I see putting on my kids, like my son is, is almost 16, and I'm already I'm putting on, like, what are you going to do for college, and what is that? And why are you thinking, I'm thinking, oh, when I read that, I said, oh my god, this is all stuff I'm putting in this box that he's, he's going to be like, all right, <laughs> we're going to get out of here, i got to put this down. Yeah. I never thought about it that way, and I thought it was so enlightening, and I wonder what made you, how did you discover that? Where did that come from? I actually have a very, very specific answer for this. Um, I was, I had written the first couple of drafts I had sent to my editor, and one of the things that the two of us were trying to work on is to really make the understanding that this is a story about generational patterns. And, you know, I bring, bring that to the forefront. And I was trying to think about, for a long time, I was thinking about how do I say what I want to say? That, that it's not that you throw away everything that your parents give you. And it's not that you take everything that your parents give you. It's something in between. Right? And I had, I was like working on that chapter and I like finished for the day and I went and I took a shower and I was taking a shower and I go, it's like a box in my head. It's like a box that you have to sort through. And as you see it there, I... I was very worried that I would forget, and I was hearing it in my head. It was coming through in, like, perfect sentences in my head. And I was like, I know that if I try to do this later, it won't come out this way. Right. So I wrote it in the steam of my shower. I wrote the entire paragraph and, and then had to later um, go turn the steam back on in my shower to get it to show up again, and I wrote it down. But it... I, I heard it, I've been thinking for a long time, and then suddenly I just, you know, it's like when you turn your brain off, and suddenly it all comes forward, and I was like, it's a box. And, and I'm so glad that you, I, I feel immensely flattered that that spoke to you, because I'm thinking, I was thinking of it, just as you were saying, I'm, I'm a child and I'm a mother, and I think any time, you know, you occupy that space of being both, mm -hmm. It, it allows you to have a lot of compassion for your parents, and it also allows you to understand, okay, I have a kid now, and so I know what it feels like to love, and I know what I want for my kids, and I have to learn from, from what came before. Right. And yet, if you, if you throw it all out, if you said, well, I don't, the way my parents raised me wasn't perfect, I'm not going to do it their way. You're throwing out so many things that could be really wonderful. There are things from, from my mom that I, I don't want to give to my kid, and there are things from my mom I want, I want to give to my kid. You know, but if you don't investigate them, you know, if, you don't, if you don't dig through it, you, know, you can't be conscious of what you're passing on. And so, to me, that, that paragraph is a whole book, um, and I'm I, it just means a lot that you saw that. So okay. it means a lot that you wrote it in the shower and you can write it down. <laughs> oh, wow. Can we we say Sila? It's just it's so powerful what God's been revealing to everybody, not even just his people, but just everyone. And I called this sermon house cleaning because that's what he wants to do he wants to uh for you to understand the general generational patterns uh both good and bad that you live that you've lived in 
um, don't have to be your whole life. You have a choice whether to take those generational patterns or leave them. And you have a choice whether to, to uh, what to sort through and what to, uh, what to leave and what to take from your box. And a lot of people just take everything or they leave everything. And the Lord is saying it's time to, it's time to clean house. It's time to, it's time to sort through all the clutter, sort through all the um, unforgiveness, sort through all the anger, sort through all the, all the, you know, joy, pain. He said it's time to sort through it. Because he, I can feel him saying, yes, Lord, he cannot take you to your next level until you sort through the box, until you decide what you're going to leave from your past or what you're going to uh, take from your past. And no matter how bad... Uh, you may not want to take anything from your past, and you may want to take everything from your past, but you need to sort through it. You need to know that you're strong enough to go through the pain and sort through it, and you'll come out the other side. The Lord has so much for you, but all these um, harmful uh, thought patterns and all these traditions are stopping you from what he wants. You, you are not limited by anything but what's in your own mind. Let me say, let me say that again. You are not limited by anything but what's in your own mind. And I, and he he wants to re God wants to renew minds today. God wants to to clean out the clutter. God wants you to have a life. He does not want you to be stuck in in harmful thought patterns and harmful uh, physical doing patterns. He doesn't. He doesn't want you to be stuck in self-doubt and insecurity and all that. He wants you to have a life and have it more abundantly. And life is possible here. You don't have to wait for heaven to have life. In fact, heaven is meant to be a continuation of the life down here. It's, your life is not meant to be awful down here and you're meant to die and go to heaven and everything's going to be great. It's meant to be a continuation. The Lord wants you to have a life. The Lord wants you to have joy. The Lord wants you to have peace. So sort through that box today and you're strong enough to sort through that box and you are not alone. You are not alone and you are his child and he loves you so much and he sent me today to, t to tell you that it's not over. It doesn't matter what your mama said, what your daddy said. It doesn't matter where you got, um... Or you grew up, how much money you ha have or didn't have, your life can start can start today. He gives new mercies, new grace every morning, and your life can start today. So don't be afraid to sort through the, that box, and you may need help sorting through that box. You may need a friend, a family member, a professional, but don't be afraid to reach for what you need. Don't be afraid to reach out and say, I need help to sort through that box. I'm, I don't want to take it with me. 
and I know I don't have to, but I need help. And the Lord is saying, that's okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay if you're weak in some area to admit that you're weak in that area. The Lord said the first, the first, um, the first thing you need to do sorting through, through, through the box is acknowledge where you're weak or where you need help. And after you do that, just lay, lay them at his feet. He's all ready to to take up to take up the clothes in your box to wash them clean and give you a new life. But if you don't give it to him, he can't do anything with it. See. Um, I don't know if anyone has moved. I moved once, and um, it was a nightmare. Because when you move from place to place, there is so much stuff to sort through. There is so much junk that you've accumulated over your lifetime that you would have to sort through and and put in, you have to decide what you're going to take, you might have to have a yard sale, you might have to um, throw some stuff out, give some stuff away, and the Lord's saying, I sow in the physical, so let it be in the natural, he said, some of the stuff in your box, you have to keep. You have to keep the stuff that he's ordained for you to keep from your past. Some of the stuff you need to just toss. And some of the stuff you can you can pass down to your children. The reason why your children are acting up is because you're passing down um, bad behavior patterns to them or you're passing down nothing to them. Some of the things that that grieve my heart about this generation is there's there's very little elder people passing on to the next generation what to do and what not to do and passing down love and passing down even something as as simple as recipes. You know, I wasn't part of uh, the generation that used to pass down recipes, but I I know my mom's generation, and my mom's 73. Her mom used to pass down recipes to her. No, actually her grandma used to pass down recipes and sayings to her. And then she passed them up down to me. But for some reason, we're so busy copying those um, on YouTube and influencers that we're not looking at the heroes that are right in our backyard. We're trying to copy and learn from people we don't know, but yet... The people that have the real wisdom are the teachers, the grandmas, the aunties, the uncles. We need your wisdom. We need you to start passing it on. We need to know what you know about cooking. Not only cooking, but about life, about how to persevere. Um, the thing I love about people of old is that they were so resilient. They went through so much, but they're so re- resilient. Where, whereas us, we have so much, but we can't take anything, uh, generally speaking. We need to get our grit back. We need to get our de- determination back. And we need to understand 
that because they did it doesn't mean we have to, and because they didn't do it doesn't mean we can't. Let their their ceiling be our floor. We can come up higher than the, than the ones before us ever did, and the ones after us will come up higher than we ever did. Spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally. God wants us to have a life, but, but before we do that, we need to sort through our box to figure out what we take and what we leave behind. We can't be spinning in circles all the time of our lives. We need to take some decision, make some decisions that will bring us forth into the destiny that God has. There's so much greatness in you. There's so much purpose in you. God has so much. But you need to sort through the stuff. You need to sort through all the negative emotions, all the negative doubt, all the trauma. And you just need to sort through it. Just decide what you're going to take, what you're going to pass on, and what you're going to uh, leave behind. Because he wants to share things with you, but your box is so clogged up that he doesn't have room to um, share with you his secrets, or he doesn't have room to put anything else in there. Because there's so much in there that you don't need or things that you do need that you're not utilizing. He wants to break generational patterns today. Harmful generational patterns. And, and he wants to highlight the um, helpful generational patterns. The God-given generational patterns. Your grandma told you how to deal with your son, but because you think that's the old way, you're not using it. And some some of the generational patterns you can't use all the way, but you, you can tweak them. You, you may not do it the same way your grandma does, but you can use her base and add your own things to it to make it something new. The Lord is totally doing something new. And he's sorting through all the stuff that we don't need to make us what he wants us to be. He's getting rid of all the old traditions, what we think is church and whatever. And He's bringing in some new new stuff, and he's actually teaching us what to keep in this hour. And he he just says, it's time for house cleaning. You've been stuck for too long. It's time to clean house. And when you clean house, you'll you'll feel so much better. And anyone who does house clean cleaning, a deep house cleaning, uh, knows that after you cl do the deep house cleaning, you feel so much better. There is light housekeeping that you do every week or whatever, uh, like sweeping, mopping, all of that, laundry, you know, all of that. And there is the deep house cleaning, um, the, the, where you clean the fridge, clean the stove, air out everything. And when you do the deep house cleaning, your house is so much better and lighter. He said a lot of you haven't have, do the light spiritual housekeeping, like you may read a scripture verse a day or listen to a sermon, but he said it's time for you to do uh, deep house cleaning. 
It's time for you to open up the windows, deal with things that you you are not facing. If you don't face it or acknowledge it, you can't deal with it. You can't examine it, you can't get better from it, and you can't take the lessons from it. You need to deal with what is, and you need to be honest about what is. Because he is so much better for you. He is greater for you than you could ever imagine. But you need to clean your spiritual house before he can put anything new in there. It's so piled up with junk and with stuff. But you need to sort through your box. Because what is in your box is burying you. And you need to sort through your box and make it make some decisions about your box. So don't be afraid to clean house today. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be a fun thing to do. But it's necessary because after you clean out the clutter of your life, you'll see light, you'll see hope, you'll see peace, you'll see joy that you've never seen before in your life. And that's what the Lord wants for you today. Thank you, guys, for listening. See you next week. It might get loud, it might get loud, heaven's coming down, 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 and it might get loud. Your inability to sort through your box, to clean your box, is, is, is inhibiting your praise. That's why you feel so heavy when you watch church online. That's why, uh, for those of you who are actually going to church, that's why you feel so heavy when you're going to church because your box or your heart is so cluttered with things. And the Lord says you need to clean it up. You need to examine what you need to keep or what you need to throw away. Because inside your box, there are hidden gems that your grandma told you. And there are also things that you need to throw away. So you need to clean your box. And the Lord will be there, there to help you do it. And your friends around you um, are there to help you do it as well. You're not alone. We all have a box that we need to sort through. And we just need to know that the Lord will be by our side to help us and to show us who to let into our box and who to help us clean clean it out. And while you're cleaning your box, you're going to have to make some hard decisions. He may he may say you need to you need to get that person out of your life or you need to bring that person in and you may not like them or or you need to do something else unpleasant but everything that he will take you through is for your good and he is working out things in your favor but you you need to clean your box and he wants you to clean your box today. Sort sort through it. Decide what you're going to keep, what you're going to pass on, or what you're going to throw away. And
then he said another thing. He may ask you to keep what you want to throw away or to, to throw away what you what you want to keep. Just listen to his spirit. He will guide you. He will guide you to the people, to the places that he wants you to bring into your life. And he will guide you um, to the places that you need to stay away from or what you need to, or the people you need to stay away from. You don't need to worry about it. Sorting through your box is hard, but it's necessary. Thank you, Lord. After you sort through your box, you'll get ideas, you'll get strategy, you'll get ministry that you would never have gotten if you didn't sort through the box. So sort through it. You're strong enough to come out the other side after sorting through it. Sorting through the sorting through your box won't kill you. It'll only fill you with his love with his kindness, with his grace. And it'll help you receive things that you need for, the, for this next level. Thank you guys. Talk soon.